Susan B. Anthony's Unique Legacy, The Liberation of Men. Susan B. Anthony was born on February 15, 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. Born into a Quaker family, this upbringing focused on strong social beliefs and the belief in self-worth. These values defined for her the injustices of her era and the causes she would champion for her lifetime. The Quakers not only believed in the equality of men and women, they absolutely did not tolerate the evil practice of slavery. So these were two things that were just part of her nature, and she got them from the time she was a child. Education was very important to Anthony and her family. She attended district school from an early age, but was treated unfairly by a male teacher. Therefore, she was taken out and was homeschooled by her father. When Anthony turned 16, her family went bankrupt, so she began working as a teacher. Her family lived off the little money she made. She continued her job as a teacher for 10 more years, earning only a fraction of the salary her male colleagues made. She saw the lack of education for women and the lack of equal pay for equal work as a grave injustice of her day. Often saying, women of this nation in 1876 have greater cause for discontent, rebellion, and revolution than the men of 1776. She was very bright, learned her adding and subtracting, and approached her teacher. Wouldn't he give her some problems and division because she really wanted to learn it? And just give me some sample problems. Um, problems and, and I'll work on them on my own. And the teacher refused. He said there's no reason that a girl will ever need to know division. As a woman in Susan B. Anthony's era, you were totally dependent on men. A woman's main role was to be responsible for the children and everyday house chores. Anthony, however, believed in equal self-worth for all. Society's view of a woman as property with no rights to keep their own property, keep their wages, maintain custody of their children, or fair divorce laws was counter to her long-held belief that everyone should have justice, freedom, and equality under the laws. Anthony best stated this belief when saying, men and their rights and nothing more, women and their rights and nothing less. In the Quaker meeting house, men and women spoke equally. And so Susan B. Anthony thought that that's the way it was everywhere uh, until she tried to speak in public as a woman. And then she found that it was not acceptable. Uh, she first spoke at uh, a temperance meeting, and when she uh, tried to speak, she was told that the sisters were there to learn and listen. Her determination and focus to make reforms had her make many bold decisions, making her a leader in her day for women's rights. In her fight for better education for women, Susan B. Anthony raised money for admission of women to college and pushed University of Rochester into being the first university to admit women. In her efforts to defend the human rights of women and slaves, she published a newspaper called The Revolution, covering such topics as women's rights, education, and denouncing slavery. She saw often at risk to her own personal safety to bring the injustice of her times to the forefront of society. She practiced what she preached in terms of equal pay for equal work and hired women at the paper for high wages. She ensured those who listened to trust that I will ignore all law to help the slave, so I will ignore all to protect the enslaved woman. It became very apparent to Anthony that the equality of society would never advance unless all citizens had the right to participate in their government. She started the Women's National Loyalty League and Equal Rights Association, which supported the 14th and 15th Amendments and secured African American men the right to vote. Anthony's disappointment was great that still excluded women from the right to vote. She felt it was we the people, not we the white male citizen, nor yet we the male citizen, but we the whole people who formed the union. She started a petition in favor of leaving out the word male in the 14th Amendment. She also founded the National Women's Suffrage Association in the hopes of putting pressure on Congress to secure women the right to vote. Anthony strived hard to achieve her lifelong goal of equality for women, and she knew drastic measures were required to for force society into giving women the right to vote so that their participation in voting could help change the current societal limitations on women. There were other women in specific areas. Susan B. Anthony would be the first to tell you that other women got there first. What she did was pull it together and become the leader. She was known as the general. And in one of my chapters, I refer to her as General Anthony, uh, because she was able to take all these things that happened and, and focus them. She understood 
that for all the things that women were trying to get, none of them was as critical as the vote. Because no matter what we got in the legislatures, no matter what happened, it could all be voted out by the very same men that had voted it in the first time. She understood that women needed the vote in order to get and keep all the rights that they ever wanted to have. In November 1872, Anthony took on the great challenge of bringing this issue into the public forum. She took the lead with 15 other women and voted in the presidential election. Because this was illegal, Anthony was put on trial and was fined $100 for leading the event. At her trial for illegally voting, the judge asked, You voted as a woman, did you not? She replied, No, sir, I voted as a citizen of the United States. Susan B. Anthony died in 1906 with the famous quote, Failure is impossible as her last words. Her leadership in securing voting rights for women was realized 14 years later in 1920 with the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Although she is most commonly known for her leadership, courage, and determination in the suffrage movement, the legacy she left was her firm belief that women should equal men in all rights from education, wages, property, and voting. This legacy remains true today in her quote, The day may be approaching when the whole world will recognize women as the equal of men. In today's American society, and many Western societies throughout the world, women's activism in government has caused the implementation of many laws reforming those injustices that Susan B. Anthony identified in her day and worked hard to change in the late 1800s. Had she not really forged forward in her fight for women's equality and voting rights, I would not be sitting where I am today as the lieutenant governor of this great state. Her leadership in all aspects of advocating for freedom and equality established a historical path down which women have had the freedom to journey freelessly. Anthony's life was a testament in proving the idea that a woman's liberation would mean a man's liberation as well. Anthony's enduring legacy of promoting equality for women has created a society in America where women, armed with a strong education, can now go out and obtain a high-wage job, giving a man the opportunity to participate more fully in the care of a family, a sharing of the family experience. If a man were to get sick, bankruptcy would not be an issue since their spouse could maintain a financial stability by being able to provide for the family as well as be a decision maker for the household. We used to use this phrase that went, women's liberation is men's liberation too. And we thought we were terribly clever. I thought whoever said it had invented it. I think it was Gloria Steinem. Uh, it turns out Susan B. Anthony understood that as well. She was the one who was saying back in the 1800s, uh, once we get women to their full equality and independence, then men will be freer also. And families will be better off when men can stay home and do more of the child rearing. We think we just invented this notion in the 90s. She knew it back then. Truly, Susan B. Anthony's legacy is in the liberation of men. By elevating women to a position of equality, men are offered the intellect, energy, and unique insights from a vast pool of resources that, without Susan B. Anthony, would never have had the chance to be heard nor utilized. It is clear that Susan B. Anthony's battle for equality has made her mark on the men in today's society. Susan B. Anthony's legacy has helped shape much of today's political landscape. During elections, Women's issues, pay equity and education have become substantive campaign issues. Today's politicians must have platforms addressing those issues as well as proven track records of success in dealing with them to be considered viable. As governor of Iowa, I'm especially proud of supporting women's issues and having appointed the most women in Iowa history to government positions. In terms of Susan B. Anthony's legacy, as it relates to the impact on men, her advancement of women's equality has given me the opportunity to surround myself with determined, focused, and well-educated women that are truly making a difference in the lives of the citizens of this state, as well as contributing greatly to my success as governor. Although equality for women in America and worldwide continues to be an issue that takes center stage as a national discussion, it can certainly be said that a man's life is better when partnered with an equal woman. In the words of Susan B. Anthony, speak of women as a human being, as a citizen of the United States, as a half of the people in whose hands hold the destiny of this nation.